Family Theater presents Dinah Shore and Gigi Perot. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, brings you Gigi Perot in Window in the Sky. To introduce the drama, your hostess, Dinah Show. Window in the sky. Ever wonder if there mightn't be something of that kind up there above us? A window from where the faces of loved ones gaze down on us. Loved ones whose eyes shine at the sight of us and whose lips tremble with prayers for our well-being and happiness. Well, I've wondered about it, and that's why I want to tell you about a story I once heard. A story about a window in the sky. It begins in Nora Robbins' kitchen as she prepares Sunday dinner for her husband, Bill, and her seven-year-old daughter, Celie. Mom! Oh, I was just going to call you to get washed up, darling. Father will be here any minute. Mom? Yes, Celie? Why don't I have a little brother or sister like the other kids do? It's a long story, Celie. Go get washed. I like long stories, and I can always get washed. Celie, you heard me. Your father will be here any minute. Then I'll ask him. And I'll let you if he's late to dinner. In the meantime, Celie, just realize, please, that little brothers and sisters are expensive. No, we aren't poor. It isn't convenient right now. You mean you have to buy them? Well, it amounts to that. Then where did Mrs. Mangini to get the, get the money to buy all she has? And Rosa says there's another one ordered. I don't know. And the Mangini kids have twice as much fun as I do. They've even got an orchestra. Now, Celie, if you think you I... You don't have to have an orchestra, Mom. But if I just have one little brother... He wouldn't be old enough to play with you. Yes, he could. I could play mother and... And he could get on the basketball team like Nick Mangini... And I could cut his picture out of the paper like Rosa. Please, please, Seely. Mm-hmm. I smell meat. Is dinner ready? You see, Seely, what little boys grow up to be? Was Daddy really a little boy once? Yes, dear. And he remained one. How was your game, Bill? Oh, rotten, my Cherie. Jenkins beat me on the last hole for five bucks. Oh, Seely, learn anything in Sunday school? Yes, Daddy. I learned that I want a little brother. Yeah, well, that's helpful. What course are they teaching in Sunday school these days? Not the golf course, thank goodness. <laughs> Go wash and take Celie with you. Daddy, what is five bucks? Uh, five dollars, honey. Why? You see, Mommy, that could have been a down payment on my little brother. Uh, what? Uh, this strange child of yours is haranguing me for a little brother. Oh. Daddy, couldn't we at least order one now? They shouldn't make us pay for him until he gets here. And Rosa Mangini says... Seely Robbins, will you stop telling me what Rosa Mangini says and go get ready for dinner? <laughs> it isn't just a mail-order transaction, Seely. No, I guess it isn't. <laughs> Anyway, Nora, darling, you can still cook. <laughs> I just threw it together. Can I be excused now, Mommy? Yes, dear. But don't leave the house. It's getting dark. But I wanted to talk with Rosa Mangini. <laughs> don't look at our daughter that way. It's no laughing matter. Celie, you simply must not continue these talks with Rosa Mangini. <laughs> Especially if it has to do with ordering a little brother, C.O.D. You let me handle this, Bill Robbins. It's more important you get your history lesson, Celie. Tomorrow's school, remember? I've already gotten it. I know all about George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and... And, yeah, and what? Uh, a nice man by the name of Book. Book... Well, I think it was Bookie. Bookie? 
Not the one you know, dear. <laughs> Was it Booker, Seely? Yes, Booker. Booker? But yes, old Princeton 39. Booker T. Washington. That's him. Oh, sure, that great Negro word. Uh, Not uh, shortstop, educator. Quit leaping into my mouth and dragging out words. I was afraid they were choking you. And you know something, Daddy? Booker T. Washington had six brothers and sisters. Uh-oh. Oh. This is where I came in. Mommy! Mommy, turn off your light, dear. I've already said my prayers, Mommy. I didn't wait for you. That's all right, dear. You know why? I wanted to pray for a little brother, and I didn't think you'd let me. Oh, oh, Celie, don't make Mommy feel bad. Kiss your old mother. I love you, Mommy. I love you, dear. Good night. Mr. Mangini, could do you suppose you could sell me a baby brother cheap? Oh, but you have another one ordered. My daddy, well, he doesn't know how to get things cheap. My father in heaven? Well, I did, but I don't think he heard me. Wake up, little girl. Huh? I said, wake up. You might catch a cold sleeping on that grass. Oh, what? Where am I? Well, now that depends upon the point of view. It's a park. The most beautiful park I ever saw. Those fountains and birds and soft golden lights over everything. It is nice at that. I was sleeping in my bed. How did I get here? Well, miss, I really don't know. Who are you? Name's Washington, miss. You're not George Washington. No, Booker. Booker T. Washington? Yes. Why, I know you. You've got six brothers and sisters. Guess that's about right. And you? Wait a minute. If you're Booker T. Washington, you're dead. Am I now? You have to be. I read it in my history book at school. <laughs> well, I can't say I'm opposed to books and schooling. So let's just say that... When the folks weren't looking, old Booker slipped out of his shell and skedaddled away. Like bugs do? Yes, like those old darn needles and flying bug. You've seen their shells lying around. Oh, yes, but... What's the matter, honey? If you've slipped out of your shell, I must have slipped out of mine, too, or I wouldn't be here. Well, now let's not be too sure about that until we find out. There might be a mistake. What's your name, child? Celie Robbins. Hmm... Now, I don't recall seeing your name on today's list. I'll tell you what. What, Mr. Washington? I haven't time to take you over to the office right now. I have an appointment with a couple of friends of mine. You'd better come along with me, and later I'll find out why you're here. Okay. Mr. Washington. Yes, Celie? Do you mind if I take my shoes off and go barefooted? The grass is so nice Why, and... certainly, child. Come along. <laughs> And over there is the lake where Christopher Columbus demonstrates how he discovered America. Seems like every arriving sea captain has to talk it over with the Chris personally. Oh, I think this is the most fascinating park in the world. Or out of it, I suppose. What do they call it? Well, there are different names for it, depending mostly where you're from. Paradise, as good as any, I guess. Paradise Park. Oh, that's beautiful. But look... Look over there. Isn't that Abraham Lincoln? Yes, that's Mr. Lincoln. And who's that kind-looking lady with him? Miss Florence Nightingale. I know her, too. She started our Red Cross drive at school. I expect she did at that. 
And what's that little pool of water they're looking down into? Well, it's sort of a window. A window? What can you see through it? Most anything you want to, I guess. Could I go down and look into it and see Mommy and Daddy? I think so. We'll go over and ask them anyway. Hello, Booker. Come on over. We've been waiting for you. Sounds like we have a heavy schedule for today, Mr. Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Tolerable. Well, now, who is this sweet little miss you have with you, Booker? This is Miss Seely Robbins. Seely, meet Miss Florence Nightingale. How do you do, Seely? Fine, thank you, Miss Nightingale. And this gentleman, Seely, is Mr. Abraham Lincoln. Hello, Seely. Nice to have you with us. That's what I want to speak to you about, Mr. Lincoln. I don't recall seeing her name on today's list. Well, no, Booker, it wasn't. But I... Robbins. Robbins, Robbins, Robbins. Uh, Florence, would you hand me that book? The book of... Uh... Let me see, 19 and uh, 67. That's the one. Let's see now. P, Q, R, yeah, Robbins. Say, this is serious, Booker. Here, take a look. Hmm. William Everett Robbins. Yes, this is serious. Did my daddy do something wrong? <laughs> Not yet, child. Here, uh, let's take a look through the window. I want to know more about this. Oh, I think I'll hit the sack, Mrs. Robbins. I think you won't. I've waited through breakfast, Sunday papers, a golf game, dinner, and a bestseller for the privilege of having a private word with you. All right, just one. Let's have it. Celie's right. Mm, about what? She's entitled to a brother. Now, wait a minute, Nora. You heard because me. Because if this is the beginning of an agitation... It isn't. It's the end of one. Well, in that case, I'll go to bed. Not until this is settled once and for all. Now, Nora, you know business is in a slump right now, and from what everybody says, it's going to get worse. We probably don't have anything to worry about, but from what everybody says... I'm not the least bit interested in what everybody says. Besides, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Oh, no? I can just hear you now. Baby needs new shoes. Baby needs a new bed. Send for the doctor. Ba baby's got croup. Don't you mimic me, Bill Robbins. <laughs> and, and don't leave yourself wide open by pursuing this matter any further. But, Bill, darling, don't you see that we will be so much happier? All of us. <laughs> Since when you get happier tied down every night and missing your afternoon bridge... I can remember quite clearly when Celie was a baby and how oh, you... Oh, I know, I know. But think, too, of what a joy she was to us right here at home. Oh, Bill. Now, look here, Please. Laura, it was your decision more than mine that Celie was enough. Or don't you care to recall that? Yes, I know, honey. But I was wrong then. I realize that now. And you're wrong again. Anyway, it doesn't make any difference. We're not going to have any more little Robinses running around the house right now, oh. and that's fine. I'm going to go to bed. Don't be discouraged by what you saw and heard down there, dear. No, Miss Seeley. Your mother and father just having a little domestic civil war. Mr. Lincoln here can tell you civil wars generally come out all right in the end. Don't they, Mr. Lincoln? <laughs> Seeley, child. It took a heap of men to win the one I know about. But every day all over the world, women like your ma are winning their civil wars single-handed. <laughs> but gee, Miss Nightingale, it shouldn't hurt her daddy to have just one more little baby, should it? Oh, no. Not unless things have changed down there, Seely. <laughs> anyway, this is the best television set I've ever seen. Can we turn it on again? Well, now, we'd better let your ma and pa sort of cool oh, off. I don't want to see them when they're quarreling. I know. Rosa Mangini's house. And uh, where might Rosa live? I don't think it's got an address, but you just cut across behind my house, down to the railroad tracks, and there. That's it. That's it. I'm afraid that old building's a packing house, child. Not anymore, it isn't. Rosa's pop and all the Mangini's got hammers and nails and scrub brushes. Why, she's right. 
They've got rooms like hospital wards down there. Mm-hmm. Two big ones. One for five girls and one for four boys. They're going to have to make the boys' room larger pretty soon, though. <laughs> I don't see your friends. They must be out for the night. No, they're in the basement. Can't you make that a little stronger? Well, I see. Now you see them, don't you? Well, I see something. <laughs> Looks like a bunch of Mexican hopping beans down there. That's their orchestra. They're practicing. Oh, why can't we hear them? It'll be floating up in the jiffy, miss. Ah, uh, that was a better, bambini, much better. Only Mario, you, you blow too strong. You're gonna bust something. Well, not too late. We close with the national anthem of our country. Give me the horn, Mario. I start us out, and then you all, you join in. Now, come on. All is set now. The national anthem. <laughs> what's the matter? What's the matter here? It's not the national anthem now. What's the matter? They, they change? Well, anyway, that's a good. Come on, we play again. Shut up! Well, play! All right, now. One, two, and three. Wonderful. Well, <laughs> looks like Mr. Lincoln, the music down there has changed somewhat since we were there. Yes, I was thinking the same thing myself, Booger. Can't say as how we've missed much. No. No, as a matter of fact, I'm beginning to get a new slant on that visit I made to Ford's Theater. Oh. <laughs> you mean maybe? <laughs> I mean the good Lord moves in strange ways sometimes. To protect us. <laughs> what are they talking about, Miss Nightingale? Oh, well, you see, these men, they, they must have their little jokes, silly. But didn't you like the Mangini's music? Well, I... Oh, but I forgot. You wouldn't understand. You're English. <laughs> I mean, they don't have that kind of music over in England, do they? Well, I, I don't know, silly. But forget about my being English. There are no English up here. Are they that bad? <laughs> <laughs> no, Celie. It's just that there, there are no English. No Americans, no Germans, no Italians. In fact, no red men, yellow men, or black men. We're all the same here, Celie. All equal brothers and sisters. Like, like Mr. Lincoln once said. Oh. And, and now I, I think it's about time that you were going back to your mama and papa. Do they tell the window? No, like you always see them, through your own bright little eyes. More coffee? Mm, no, thanks. Got to run. I wonder what's keeping that child. She'll be late for school. Oh, let her sleep. Be good for her. Uh, what was that? Mm, Cecily, probably. What? Bill, somebody's chasing Cecily. What? Daddy, 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 I've got a wonderful story for you. I was away last night up in the sky with Abraham Lincoln, Booker T. Washington, and Florence Nightingale. And we were talking and looking down through a window at you and Mommy quarreling. And the Mangini's practicing with their orchestra. Grab her, Bill. She's in a delirium. I'm not, Mommy. Oh, I'm not. Celie, stop this instant. Get her to bed while I call the doctor. All right. Now, now, up with you, darling. Daddy's No, Daddy. No, bed. Daddy. Stop, stop. You've got to listen. <laughs> Just let me in there, Bill. I, I can't stand this suspense. Uh, all right. I call a doctor if you're going to interfere. Oh, Bill, it's brain fever. I, I know it is. Hush, don't be that way. Kid's had a bad dream is all. She'll snap out of it. I, I think he's coming. You can come in now. She's sleeping. What is it, doctor? What's the matter with Celie? Well, uh, quite truthfully, Nora, I don't know. 
He does have a fever. My mind is inclined to wander at times. Is it serious? That's just it, Bill. As yet, I don't know. Nora, has anything happened that might have upset her? Well, I don't think so. Unless... Well, she has been kind of... Well, what is it, Nora? Well, she, she's been running around and hollering for a baby brother. And what did you tell her? Oh, we... Well, I told her no, that it was impossible at the present time. To a child, nothing is impossible. I think we'd better discuss this further, Bill. Let's go in the other room and let Celie sleep. Mr. Lincoln. Why, Celie, what are you doing back up here? Oh, Mr. Lincoln, I did what he told me to do, but my daddy won't believe me. And he said that I couldn't have a little brother. Oh, Mr. Lincoln, I just don't know what to do now. Celie, <laughs> darling, come here. Oh, oh Miss Nightingale. Why? No, no, Celie, don't cry anymore, dear. Celie, child, what happened? Booker, Booker, this is getting serious. You got to try and do something. I know, let's take a look down there and see what's going on in that Robbins household anyhow. Let me see now. Mario! Reeves, how many times I gotta tell you? Mario, you blow too strong. At some time, you're gonna bust something and you can't fix no more. Now, please, we try once more. Everybody ready? One, two, three! <laughs> I would say your timing was a bit off, Abe. Did you push the wrong button, Mr. Lincoln? <laughs> That's just what I did, Celie. <laughs> well, let's try it again. Ah, uh, there now. That's it. Oh, Doctor, that's the only thing I can possibly think of that might have upset her. But that shouldn't make her ill, should it, Doctor? Well, now, that's where you're mistaken, Nora. You have an extremely imaginative and highly precocious little daughter. She's also highly tenacious in her beliefs. In this instance, she believes that there should be an addition to this family. And she also believes in... But so those firmly. mad ravings, the stuff about Lincoln and Booker T. Washington, Florence Nightingale, the beautiful park called Paradise. What's so mad about that? I should imagine that if you were to run across such fine souls as that, like they... You'd find them in just such lovely surroundings. And if it should be given to anyone to visit them, I should imagine it would be an innocent little child. <laughs> ah, don't cry, darling. <laughs> Let her. It's good for her to cry. And it's good for you to see her cry. Yes. I think I understand now. Thanks to you, Doctor. No, Bill. Not thanks to me. <laughs> Well, Abe, I guess we don't have to do anything about it after all. No, Booker. No, I, I think it's been done for us. <laughs> Funny how stubborn a man can get sometimes, isn't it? Well, you should certainly know about that. <laughs> I don't recall anybody stopping you when your mind was made up, Florence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Little Celie has done a pretty good job, too. Celie, I think you'd better be going home now. Yes, my dear, your problems seem to be solved. Please, though, Mr. Lincoln and Mr. Washington, before I go back, could, could I ask you for just one more tiny favor? Oh, of course, Celie. What is it? Could I please see the Mangini family just once more through the window? <laughs> All right. In fact, I'm kind of interested myself in seeing just how little Mario is getting along with that big horn. I'm
you, Gigi Perot, for your fine performance in Family Theater's presentation of The Window in the Sky. You know, many of our Family Theater listeners have written to us to tell us that they've begun the practice of daily family prayer in their own homes. It's certainly heartwarming to know that our little message is being heard and followed by people all over the country. But occasionally someone writes to tell us that prayer is not as easy as it sounds, that it's difficult to pray. Well, I'd like to read a little poem that may be of help to you if you feel that way too. It was written by James J. Metcalf, and it's called Time to Pray. It is not difficult to pray when we are faced with fears or when the shadows climb the walls and tragedy appears. Our voices rise above the roar of every raging sea, and words of sudden eloquence present our tearful plea. But when there is no storm and when we have a perfect day, we seldom turn our thoughts to God or, or take the time to pray. And if it is a duty then, it also is a task to thank him or to let him know the miracles we ask. And yet a daily prayer to God is such a little thing compared to all the comfort and the blessing it can bring. Thank you for being with us. And remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater has brought you Gigi Perot in Window in the Sky with Dinah Shore as your hostess and narrator. Others in our cast were Gene Van Der Pyl, Stephen Chase, Jay Laughlin, Harley Bear, Constance Cavendish, Tim Graham, and Jay Novello. Our story was written by Raymar Merman, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. This is Gene Baker inviting you to be with us next week at this time when your family theater will present Maureen O'Sullivan and Gene Raymond in the love story of Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning with James Gleason as your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theatre is heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation and is broadcast to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.